hello friends and thanks for joining me on this pot three video and also final video on the backyard live steam railroad after waiting many many weeks my gauge from the united kingdom finally arrived and i was very happy because i could make more progress on the engine now that i had track to run it on i got right to work as soon as it arrived and installed the gauge the initial port that i used i did not really like the way the gauge was sitting. So I ended up, uh, you see in later in the video, modifying mm -hmm. where the gauge uh, comes off of. It ended up coming off the water glass uh, port rather than off the steam torrent. I just didn't like the angles that this uh, would have made me do. Also with my order came some Welsh steam coal. Uh, I got this from Triple R Services down in New Jersey, and they were very good about uh, getting it to me. I also took my daughter's uh, Lego container to hold it. I also got a whistle valve and a whistle. Here you see the later configuration of the gauge. I also fitted up the whistle. I didn't plumb it all the way under the frame like I wanted to. Uh, I basically wanted to see this was a proof of concept and you know, just using some elbows, it was mocked up fine. Up upstairs. Mm -hmm. upstairs, upstairs. The other issue I had to address on this engine was the dreadful state of the plumbing underneath. Every time on the bench I would pump water into the boiler, half the water would just end up on the track or on the workbench. And that just simply was not doing. I was dumping most of the water just onto the track. And the previous person that had plumbed this engine uh, just it was just awful underneath uh, cold joints and bad solder connections so this was addressed I got a good roaring fire out on my track and went to do a test run of this engine now the engine held pressure just fine on the hydro test so I found a decent day out Got up a good head of steam, went out there, and as soon as you opened the throttle, the pressure went to zero and the fire went out. This was a problem I had to address. There was something bigger lurking inside this engine. Going over to Gordy's house, we took a look at it and put the engine back under pressure with compressed air and water and ended up finding that the boiler flange gasket in the front was leaking and that was causing all the steam to come out and flood the smoke box with steam and put out your fire this necessitated taking off the smoke box and doing some more extensive digging and also removing the boiler from the locomotive with the two separated i knew i had much more work to get going on this Looking at stock pictures from the internet of the boiler fitting, I was just trying to get an idea of what I had to deal with. I tried to remove the superheater to start working on it, and of course, the steel screws inside of the bronze superheater had uh, made that impossible to remove. So that necessitated drilling it out, and the drill bits unfortunately picked the softer bronze or brass than the hard steel screws but i eventually triumphed to got it out and as you can see here the gasket is in dreadful shape i then had to deal with these leftover studs and ended up drilling them out flattening them and then i had to reinstall the superheater and i think this is where the second problem came in is in the handling of the superheater, I think I caused a second crack. While I had the boiler off, I addressed a lot of the plumbing issues and also some clearance issues with the eccentrics rubbing against the frame. I also replaced the low-hanging uh, water inlet and also some of the worn-out uh, tubing. Off to the drill press, I then drilled out new holes and tapped them for different screws. Everything was offset uh, about uh, 90 degrees to the holes. 
using some RTV Copper Plus sealant and some copper washers, I resealed the boiler flange and then reinstalled the superheater and hoped for the best. Once the solvent or the sealant was cured, I repressurized the uh, steam system. And as you can see, with full of water, I did cause a second hole in the superheater tube. And at this point, I had to step away from the engine. At this point, the project's hit somewhat of a roadblock. I talked to a few of the live steam people I knew, and they suggested just getting rid of the superheater altogether and straight piping the engine. However, the project hit a roadblock here. With track car season and full swing, I had some commitments to fulfill with railroads and also track car projects. And I also had to work uh, at my locomotive engineer job, which got in the way of spending any time on this engine. Also did a nice uh, two day track car excursion. So not much happened on the steam engine for a couple of three weeks. I ended up going to a burner supply store to find the proper quarter inch uh, piping for the straight pipe conversion on this locomotive. Uh, not knowing how to silver solder very well, I uh, deferred that to another live steamer, uh, Jay Monty, who was nice enough to help me. And while I did that, I overlooked his collection of locomotives. It was quite a nice collection and he has a very, very nice shop. After a pickle bath in the vinegar to clean up the scale overnight on this piece, I reinstalled it and uh, it seemed to work very well. Uh, losing the superheater, you lose a little bit of efficiency, but uh, you know this isn't that big an engine that it really matters. And also this eliminates a failure point inside the engine. And with that, the project started going in the right direction. Things started getting reassembled rather than taken apart. Uh, I reinstalled the smoke box and uh, reinstalled the boiler back onto the frame. And here I did an air test just to check for leaks. Uh, it's kind of hard to see in the camera, but there was some soapy water uh, sprayed on the engine there. Daddy, send my mom. It's working. Yeah. Push yeah. it again. What do you think? Yeah. With the help of my chief mechanical officer in reassembling the locomotive and testing it, I decided to bring it out to the track for a test run. I built up a good fire, starting with charcoal and switching to the Welsh coal. <whistles> Testing out my whistle, I decided to get going. And I decided to just run under its own power first, just to make sure everything was functioning correctly. And then, with it working correctly in both directions, I decided to hop on it for the first thing. It was somewhat of a trend to be seeing the locomotive actually pull me along for the first time. I also learned that three and a half inch scale backwards on the ground is terrifying. With the locomotive back together, I decided to host a small steam up of a few local people, including one of the people that were very uh, involved in the hobby during its beginning, Richard Sims. There we see Ben taking the locomotive back and forth on the track. And here we see Ben wishing that this locomotive was a diesel.
We did a few more runs, but we had some trouble keeping the fire lit. It's mainly due to our inexperience with this engine. So we ran it a little bit more than called it a night. I have a little list of things I have to do to tinker with it. But other than that, the locomotive is in okay shape. Anyway, thanks for watching this three-pot video series. I hope you found it useful.